Welcome to 30 Days of Gratitude. We're studying about gratitude in the Psalms, and we've come to day number 30, our final lesson in this series. We're going to talk about Psalm 30 and verse number 12 to look at the lesson entitled Gratitude Forever. Thank you for joining in and being a part of this series uh, from the beginning till now. All of you who have participated and studied along with us, uh, we appreciate it and uh, thank you for being a part of this last lesson. It's Thanksgiving Day. Wonderful to have a day set aside in the year where we can focus on and think about giving thanks, showing our gratitude to God. But the truth of the matter is, and, and we know this and we understand it, from our study of the Bible and even these previous lessons that we've looked at, that God deserves gratitude more than on one day a year. He deserves gratitude every day, and He wants us to be grateful and thankful every day. And so we want to look at the Psalms and notice some passages that teach us the importance of being thankful and grateful always as we talk about gratitude forever. So we're going to start in Psalm 30. In verse 11 and then verse 12, the psalmist says, Thou hast turned for me my mourning into dancing. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness to the end that my glory may sing praise to thee and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give thanks unto thee forever talking about the importance of gratitude and the psalmist reminds us that gratitude is forever. God deserves our thankfulness always, every day of our lives and all the way into eternity. Why is that? If we just look at this psalm and the context here of these two verses, the psalmist says that God takes our mourning, our sorrow and our, our sadness and he doesn't just remove the sorrow, but he turns it into dancing. Dancing is an expression of joy, of elation. So God takes sorrow and he replaces it with gladness. He takes our sackcloth, which is the garment that's worn in a time of sorrow and of trouble and of agony of spirit. And he doesn't just remove the sackcloth which would be a wonderful thing, but he clothes us then with gladness, from sorrow to gladness. You see, God is so good that he doesn't just remove us from sin, but he places us in his son and gives us salvation and declares us righteous and justified and gives us access to all spiritual blessings in Christ and heaven when we die. He is worthy of gratitude every moment of our lives, even into eternity. The psalmist says that God does this to the end. The goal is to create people who are grateful and who are thankful, who will give their being to sing praise to God and to give thanks to Him forever. Notice some other psalms that illustrate this idea. Psalm 71, verses 14 and 15. But I will hope continually and will yet praise thee more and more. My mouth shall show forth thy righteousness and thy salvation all the day, for I know not the numbers thereof. Let me ask a question. Are you more grateful to God today than you were yesterday, than you were when you first became a Christian than you were 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 50 years ago. The psalmist says, I'll praise you more and more. Not that I'm going to grow less and less in my praise. Not that I'm going to get tired and give up and stop praising you. But the longer I live, the more of my time I'm going to devote to praising God. He says, my mouth will show forth God's righteousness and his salvation all day long. He says, for I know not the numbers thereof. And that may mean that he doesn't know the numbers of his days. And so he's going to do it while he has time. But I think it also is the idea that he is not able to number 
all of the righteous things that God does in relation to salvation. He can't count up all of the good things that God does, all of his righteousness. And so he has to just praise him more and more and more <clears throat> because the longer time goes on, the more good things God does, and that makes him more worthy of praise. So gratitude is forever. Psalm 145 in verse 1 beginning says, I will extol thee, my God, O king, I will, and I will bless thy name forever and ever. Every day will I bless thee, and I will praise thy name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise thy works to another, and shall declare thy mighty acts. Notice what the psalmist tells us here. Great is the Lord, and because he's great, He's to be praised greatly. And because his greatness is unsearchable, we can't fully understand and, and grasp the greatness of God. It's eternal. Because his greatness is that vast, he deserves continual, eternal praise. Forever and ever I will bless thy name. Forever and ever I will praise thy name every day because he's God, because he's king. And not only that, but I'm going to pass it on to the next generation. I'm going to teach them to praise God. One generation will praise God's works to the next, to another, and then they will do so to the next generation because God deserves praise throughout all generations of men's lives here on the earth because of his greatness. Now, how are our children going to learn to be grateful and be thankful to God if they don't see it in us? How is the younger generation that's you know, coming up in the Lord's church, how are they going to know to express gratitude and thanks to God if they don't hear it from the older generation? We have a responsibility to pass this gratitude on because God deserves it. We continue in Psalm 146, verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, will I praise the Lord. I will sing praises unto my God while I have any being. As long as there is life in my body, breath in my lungs, I will praise God. Why? Because he's worthy of eternal gratitude. So great are his blessings and his goodness toward us that we must show thanksgiving, gratitude forever. Come to the end of the Bible, the end of the New Testament in Revelation 4. We read about four beasts. They had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne who liveth forever and ever. Notice, they don't rest night and day praising God, giving him glory and honor and thanks because gratitude's forever. God deserves it for all eternity because of the good things he has done for us. And so we see in eternity that praise will continually be offered to God. Revelation 7 verse 11 says, All the angels stood round about the throne and all the, about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. You notice gratitude was included. Thanksgiving to God forever and ever. Amen. Let it be so. The word amen means. Let it be so that God receives gratitude from us every day and forever in eternity because of all the good things he has done for us because of his very nature of goodness and love and kindness and compassion 
mercy, and grace. Let's be grateful, thankful forever. Colossians 3.17 says, Whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Everything that we do, every word that we say, every action that we take in our lives needs to be something that we can look back on and say that God was pleased, that it demonstrated gratitude toward him because I did it in the name of the Lord. And that doesn't mean that we say Jesus after everything that we do. It means that we live by his authority. We live in obedience to his will. We live a life that honors him, that glorifies him, that thanks him by living a life as he instructs, walking in the light as he is in the light. 1 John 1 and verse 7. When we do that, we are expressing gratitude to God. It's not just about saying thank you, though we need to do that, and we need to do it more and more, and we need to practice it more and more, and we need to get better and better at it, and it needs to become second nature to us that we're constantly thankful for all that God has done for us and that he is who he is. But it also we also show our gratitude by living a life that honors him, by living in obedience to his will turning away from evil, doing that which is right and that which is good, teaching his gospel to the lost, setting an example that others can see Christ in us. We're showing our gratitude to God. And gratitude is forever. We need to be thankful. We need to grow in our gratitude and be more and more thankful every day and long for and look for the, the time when we can finally see God face to face and express an eternal thanksgiving to him for his goodness and his mercy. Because he is good and his mercy endures forever. I hope that on this Thanksgiving day that you'll pause and give thanks to God. But I hope that it won't be just this day. I hope we'll understand gratitude forever and that God is to be thanked and to be honored and to be praised and to be served every day. And that we truly will devote our lives to doing just that, to honoring him with the gratitude that he truly deserves. I hope this series of lessons has been beneficial to you. Appreciate you uh, joining in and being a part of it and, and truly hope that uh, it's been good for you to be here and to study these things with us. I know it has for me. It always is to uh, remind myself and to focus in on these aspects of, of gratitude to, to be pleasing unto God. And especially on this day when we can uh, join in with so many others around the country and express thanks to God for all his wonderful blessings. It's a wonderful thing, a, a great uh, day to be a part of, and I hope that it will become a part of our lives daily and that we will always be thankful and grateful to God. Again, we appreciate you being here, and I hope that you'll take the message with you and live a life that shows your gratitude to God forever. Thank you for joining us and for being a part of this series of lessons. We hope to study again with you very soon.